holiday travel weekend turns into a close call for one Colorado deputy. The duty that I have to protect others just took over. A potentially dangerous situation avoided thanks to his brave actions. The decision to go ahead and put myself in that danger is relatively an easy one. To protect people that are innocent is an absolute priority. A nurse undeterred by the war in Ukraine. I didn't want to be a part of the bystander. I, I wanted to, to jump in and help. Tonight, she brings her experience home after spending months on the front lines. It's not stopping anytime soon, um, and we can't forget about it. We can't. All right, Labor Day travel night in full swings. People making their way home after this long weekend getaway. You're taking a live look along I-70 near Floyd Hill. Still plenty of travelers out, but traffic moving smooth as the summer travel season comes to an end. Well, thank you for joining us and good evening. Thank you for joining us on Local 3. I'm Jessica Porter. And I'm Shannon Ogden. Glad you're with us tonight. A busy travel weekend means a lot can go wrong. And Sunday evening for drivers along I-70 east of Araba, it almost did. Colorado State Patrol says a driver who was traveling westbound in eastbound lanes appeared to be under medical duress. As Denver 7 CB Cotton reports, the deputy who stopped the driver has faced danger more than once in the past two years. The cars were moving faster than these. We got multiple 911s of a wrong way driver on Interstate 70 going westbound in the eastbound lanes. And Lincoln County Deputy Mike Hutton knew he had to act. Before I knew it, I, I saw the headlights coming at me and a line of cars behind me at about mile marker 385. And within seconds, you know, I had to make the decision to just place my vehicle at a, at a little bit of an angle and just take that hit myself. He took the hit. Sunday evening around 9 p.m., Deputy Hutton and his cruiser became the buffers to potential tragedy on I-70, three miles east of Araba. The oath that I swore and the duty that I have to protect others and, and put their lives uh, before mine just took over. And I did what I thought was right in the moment to just mitigate any serious injury or possibly death to anybody else. The bumpers for each car took a beating, but thankfully Hutton and the wrong way driver only had minor injuries. Healing the mind is another hurdle. Scared, absolutely scared. Um, I thought about my family, of course, and I do have a baby on the way here in about a month and a half. There's been more than one terrifying moment for Deputy Hutton in the past year. <laughs> he was shot three times while responding to a theft in progress in May of last year. Lung power is still a little iffy sometimes, but um, and mobility in my thumb and my my left wrist, stuff like that is still kind of hit and miss. But I'm I'm doing good. Honestly, I'm, I'm I can't complain. But he has no complaints because there's lives he wants to save. To protect people that are innocent, um, you know, from serious injury or death is, is an absolute priority of mine. In Lincoln County, I'm CB Cotton, Denver 7. CB, thank you. And Deputy Hutton is expected to return to the job Wednesday. Meanwhile, the incident remains under investigation. A spokesperson for the Colorado State Patrol says at this time, the wrong way driver has not been cited. All quiet on the western front this evening as we take a beautiful live look over downtown Denver. Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson joins us now. This is the unofficial end of summer, um, but uh, we've still got uh, plenty of hot days ahead, Mike. 90s and triple digits. Check this out today. 100 degrees, the high at Fort Collins and Greeley out at Grand Junction as well. Even up in the mountains, Leadville set a record high today of 78 degrees on this Labor Day and it's a warm evening now. Temperatures have slipped back into the 80s at lower elevations, 60s and 70s in the mountains, but it's still 93 out west at Grand Junction and there's been very little in the way of moisture. There were a few high based gusty thunderstorms over the collegiate peaks down into the eastern San Juans. That's been about it. That will all clear out tonight. Look across the west. We've had record heat over much of California, Nevada, up across the northern Rockies. That's just going to continue for the next couple of days. So our weather headlines, record heat is coming up. We'll break a record tomorrow and again on Wednesday. Little or no rain until Friday. There is a change coming up in the seven day, and I'll highlight that more in a few minutes. Thank you, Mike. I-25 was shut down for several hours today in Thornton after police shot and killed a man on the highway. Police say they received multiple reports of a man walking in traffic and forcing cars to swerve around him. 
They tried to make contact with a man and at some point he pulled out an unspecified weapon. He was shot by an officer and taken to the hospital where he died. The shooting is under investigation by the 17th Judicial District's critical response team. The man's identity has not been released. Major development in Sunday's mass stabbing in Canada that killed at least 10 people and injured 18 others. Canadian authorities say one of the two suspects has been found dead. Damien Sanderson's body was found today in a grassy area near a home in Regina. Investigators have not revealed the cause of death, but they add his injuries do not appear to be self-inflicted. So authorities tonight are still searching for Sanderson's brother, Miles Sanderson. They believe he could be in Regina. A motive for the stabbing spree has not been revealed yet. Investigators think some of the victims were targeted. Others appear chosen randomly. Now to the war in Ukraine. Ukrainian President Vlad Volodymyr Zelensky is accusing Russian forces of using Europe's largest nuclear power plant as a weapon. He says Russia's recent shelling caused a fire at the power plant that forced Ukrainian authorities to disconnect a backup power line. Zelensky speaking with ABC's David Muir in an exclusive interview. The biggest in the Europe. It means six Chernobyls. It means the biggest danger in the Europe. So they occupied it. So that is, means that they used nuclear weapon. That is nuclear weapon. Both Russia and Ukraine have blamed each other for the attacks around the plant, sparking international concern for a nuclear disaster. A team of inspectors visited the plant and are expected to brief the UN Security Council tomorrow. A Broomfield nurse saw what was happening in Ukraine earlier this year and took leave from work to go help. Well, she got back from the war-torn country just about a month ago. And tonight she sat down with Denver 7's Patrick Perez to share what she saw and also to emphasize why we should not forget. Yeah, Shannon, this woman is really courageous. Rebecca Masarowski told me that she did not want to be a bystander. She felt compelled to go to Ukraine and use her skills as a registered nurse in whatever way they were needed. So for about five months, Rebecca worked as a volunteer with a group called Hospitalers. Decked out in heavy military armor, she'd help with medical evacuations. That means picking up soldiers who were injured in combat, for example, stabilizing them in an ambulance and getting them to the nearest hospital. Sometimes she'd have multiple calls coming in while she was cleaning up the ambulance from the last patient. In some cases, the soldiers had unfortunately died before Rebecca and her team could even arrive. The first casualty um, that we arrived that, that had already passed was younger than my younger brother. He was 21. So that was, that was just kind of shocking, uh, I think, when you are looking at the, you have to identify them and look at the passport and notify the command and you look at the birth date and you're like, this, how is he, how is he even fighting? Now, Rebecca's main goal in speaking with us tonight was to remind us of the dire situation in Ukraine and that it's not ending anytime soon. Now, coming up tonight at 10 on Denver 7 News, a message she wants to share from the Ukrainian people and how she says you can best help them as this invasion carries on. In the studio, I'm Patrick Perez, Denver 7. It's the unofficial end of summer, which always means traffic on I-70. Saying in traffic is one of my least favorite parts about living in Colorado. <laughs> but CDOT has snow on their minds and a plan to cut back on gridlock traffic. Plenty of hot air out there today. A lot more coming up in the 70s. The Marshall Fire took everything from her. We had no warning other than big billows of smoke. Now our generous Denver 7 Gives viewers are giving this teacher the classroom of her dreams. 